Today I'm going to tell a little bit about Casino 44, a game uh, set in the Italian campaign in World War II. The game is published by Viavictis, French publisher, but the game does come with English rules. Uh, however, this video is not going to be a video review, it is just going to be an overview of the rules and the main concepts of the game. And this is because I haven't played the game that simple. Uh, haven't played it because after reading the rules uh, I kind of felt that the game is not one for me. The game uh, did not appeal to me very much. I hope that that doesn't sound too harsh but I just kind of like didn't feel a particular interest in playing the game. There are just so many other games that I want to play. Um, but then why would I make a video? about this game, usually I don't make videos in such circumstances, but then I also realized that Casino 44 is a game that really um, doesn't have much information about it out there, there isn't much that has been shared, uh, and maybe you want to know more about it, so, so take this as an informational video. I'm going to tell about some of the main ideas and concepts of this design, hoping that maybe you will like it, uh, because that's one of the main reasons why I make my videos, so that gamers may know about games that may appeal to them, or on the other hand, maybe you will learn about the game and you will see why this would not be a game for you, which is that the reason why I make my videos, so they can warn people about the games that they may not enjoy. So, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the game, my conclusions are already shared, and but they're not very strong, maybe one day I will end up playing the game and I will love it, as of now, I don't feel it is a priority for me to play this game. Still, I want to tell a little bit about it, and then you will make up your you will make up your mind. Let's start uh, from the pretty much the, one of the last sections of the rulebook, but the very beginning of the game. The game starts with the allied player uh, launching artillery attacks against the uh, German player. At the beginning of turn 1, the LA player has a total of 48 salvos available. These are 48 attacks which are resolved individually. Yes, that is a lot of attacks you need to resolve before the game even starts. In turn 4, you have a similar barrage, this time with 30 attacks. Each attack against the German positions is resolved by first rolling 2d6 and checking to see if you have hit the hex that you uh, were targeting and th this table here will tell you whether or not you hit that axe and if there are effects that apply to your next attack in case you did hit the axe then you roll again and you check this other table here to see the results of that attack so that's gonna be a lot of die rolling before the game even starts uh, it seems strange to me that there wasn't a more economic way of resolving this. For example, uh, maybe the designer could have figured out more or less what is the average amount of damage that these 48 and these 30 attacks inflict on the German player. And maybe the ally player could have just be given those attacks, uh, those points of damage to inflict on the opponent, maybe, maybe modifying that. This seems a lot of work. Uh, speaking of a lot of work, then... Uh, there is another thing that you need to resolve, and this one you need to resolve each turn, which is you need to determine the number of artillery support markers that are available to the German player. In some games you roll a die and look at a table and that tells you the supports that the player has available. Supports here mean uh, special markers that you can use in combat to your advantage to grant yourself bonuses. Here, to determine that number, you play Battleship. Mm, yeah, you interrupt the main game that you're playing on an X grade, you're playing an X encounter game, and you start playing a Battleship. The German player receives a certain number of artillery markers that are placed on this grid here secretly. The allied player rolls dice to determine the number of air attacks that he can allocate to try to destroy the German artillery support markers. And then the LA player simply starts calling out coordinates B1, D3. And uh, if the attack hits an artillery marker that is destroyed, the surviving markers can be used by the German player. Yes, you need to interrupt your hex encounter game and play Battleship just to determine the number of uh, support markers for the German player. That seems a big distraction from, from the game. 
counters uh, are divided in units and headquarters. Units have a combat strength, may have armor bonus, number of steps and quality. Uh, headquarters have quality 2 and number of supports. Supports, as I said, are markers that can be uh, used in combat. Each headquarter may receive a limited amount of these and then may distribute those again uh, among units that belong to that headquarters formation and that are within command range. After you use a support mark you have to roll a die to determine when the marker will be available again and different markers will behave in different ways so you have to often check this page of the rulebook to determine in what happens to the marker not only as you use it but after you use it to determine when the marker is going to be available again. What do we have next? Uh, the uh, sequence of play, supply and command, okay, replacements and reinforcements, support phase, uh, determining initiative, preparation phase for the allied artillery that is the one that I mentioned before and then we get to the operations phase, which really is the most important phase of the game when the stuff happens, starting from uh, turn uh, 5, you have also special phase, which is the phase in which the German player can react and the German player uh, may be assigned specific types of counter-attacks. But let's talk about the main turn, the operations phase. During that phase, the Players can activate their units. Units can be activated by formation. All units in a single formation can activate and, and they must be in command. And or uh, you can activate units using a general type activation which uh, disregards formation limits and allows you to activate three or four units depending on the side that you're playing, just because different sides, different nationalities have different doctrines that are reflected in this. So if you want, actually, you can just ignore formations and activate units differently. Then, when units activate, receive action points, and this is actually a cool concept, uh, because units activate at the same time. That means that differently from most other games that I've seen, you don't have, say, a unit activating, completing its activation, moving and attacking, and then another unit goes, completes activation, and then the next one goes. All units are available to activate at the same time. Well, all units that are active are available to act at the same time. Units receive an amount of action points that they can spend in any way they want. You can move a unit a little bit, then you move another unit, then you go back to the unit that moved, and that unit does something else, another unit attacks, meaning you can go back to units that have not completed their activations and activate them again. In order to do that, you will need, however, to use activation markers that you will have to place on the unit to keep track of the number of activation points that the unit have used so that you know how many points are still available. On one hand, I see that there really are interesting possibilities that are given by this fact. Uh, units can interact a lot and plan sophisticated actions on the same side by interrupting uh, one activation, the activation of one unit and switching to that one. However, that also means that there will be a high number of activation markers, activation point markers that you will be uh, putting on the board and then removing all the time. That, I think, is, is the trade-off. You have a zone of control that will influence uh, combat. Combat, well, here you have an overview about who can attack whom and how and when. And when somebody is obliged, is mandated to attack. And what are the exceptions and then there are exceptions to those exceptions. Things like that. There's a lot of that. A lot of little uh, details that you have to keep in mind. Attacks may be normal attacks or prepared attacks. They cost more action points. Modifiers to take into account include the defender's terrain, the quality difference, HQ support, uh, units may be in an improved position, you may have a combined attack, 
armor superiority, you compare the armor superiority factors of the two sides. At that point, you compare the total modified combat strength of the attacker, that of the defender. You find the ratio, roll a die, modify that, and that will give you the result. And this is pretty much how combat works, followed by a by a possibility of retreats and advance after combat. Uh, then let's see other rules, other things. Uh, doctrine, as I said, the two sides play in different ways. There are specific rules and modifications for each side. Supply, they, well, if you're out of supply, there will be bad things, especially if you're out of supply for more than a turn. A single turn, that's not as devastating. Uh, defensive works, replacements. Uh, more special rules, uh, including the some that I talked about earlier, such as the artillery phases, and then the special counter-attacks um, that are assigned, that are allowed uh, to the German player in the second phase of the game. So this is in general uh, what the rulebook looks like, and these are some of the main concepts and ideas that you will find. I think there are good ideas in here, it just seems that the, 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 the design uh, doesn't seem very polished, it seems that there are a lot of things that could have been uh, resolved more economically, the rulebook is not tightly written, there are informations that don't seem to be very logically uh, presented and there are ambiguities here and there, not insurmountable things, not things that I would not be able to figure out if I decided to put some effort in it, but I would need to be already otherwise excited to be uh, interested in spending time and energy to do that, and there are just so many other games out there that I'm pretty excited about that I cannot wait to play, and I think that this one can wait for another little while until, I don't know, find some reason that will motivate me uh, to give this one a go. For now, uh, I think this one will be returned to the shelf and now you know a little bit more about it and maybe you find found out that this is exactly the game you were looking for then I'm very happy for you and I'm glad that my video helped you find it out or maybe you have been warned and now you know that this is not a game for you. Either way, I hope you enjoyed my overview, not a review, of Casino 44 by uh, Vivictis.